Hello, I'm Heather Davidson in London. The Johnson & Johnson television ads begun last year for their struggling cipher drug eluding stent have created significant controversy. The New England Journal of Medicine commissioned a special editorial on the subject. We spoke with Dr. Bowden, one of the authors. I'm Bill Bowden. I'm professor of medicine and preventive medicine at the University at Buffalo School of Medicine and Public Health. So I'll be discussing uh, a provocative uh, editorial, a perspective that appears in this week's New England Journal of Medicine entitled uh, D DTCA, Direct-to-Consumer Advertising for PTCA, uh, uh, Crossing the Line uh, in Consumer Health Education. Well, the, uh, the initial uh, direct-to-consumer uh, ad, which was entitled uh, Life Wide Open, uh, promoting the cypher stent, uh, first aired uh, uh, on Thanksgiving Day during the scheduled uh, NFL football game between the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Jets. Uh, and uh, it was really a, a very provocative ad, uh, which really touted the virtues of the cypher stent uh, and uh, described uh, several presumed patients with coronary disease whose uh, life was rendered more wide open uh, by virtue of the fact that they had a, a a cipher stent uh, implanted. Uh, and uh, the ad goes on to essentially uh, espouse the virtues of this particular stent that it's been the most widely studied, it's been the most uh, 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 widely um, regarded uh, drug eluding stent, was the very first one that was FDA approved in April of 2003. Uh, but again, this occurs against the backdrop of uh, some mounting concerns that uh, first uh, uh, appeared in, uh, as you know, uh, approximately uh, late 2006 uh, after the European Society meetings, draw some attention to the concerns relating to late stent thrombosis, both with the cipher and the taxis stent. And so I think over the trailing roughly 18 months or so, there has been some legitimate interest and concern uh, regarding the late uh, subacute stent thrombosis safety issues relating to drug eluding stents. And again, uh, as we also know, uh, there's uh, increased uh, competition forthcoming in the marketplace. Uh, that is to say, uh, this year uh, there has been the recent ap approval of the new Endeavor stent, and um, uh, looming on the horizon will be the uh, expected or planned uh, FDA approval of yet a, a fourth uh, drug eluding stent, the Everolimus stent, or the Zion stent uh, that will be marketed uh, by Abbott Laboratory. So, so clearly with now uh, four or more drug eluding stents uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in circulation or in uh, available for clinical use, I should say, uh, perhaps uh, Cordis felt that they needed to make some sort of a statement with respect to this uh, direct-to-consumer uh, direct advertising um, uh, undertaking of the cipher stent, uh, possibly in order to uh, heighten continued awareness about the importance of their stent, uh, or also perhaps to uh, maintain some visibility within the marketplace given the increasing competition that will be forthcoming. Uh, so in, in point of fact, I think we can say that there was uh, actually what I would consider a perfect storm uh, that really involved uh, four separate uh, things that happened within a, a roughly six to eight month period. Uh, there was the initial disclosure uh, at the European Society Congress of Cardiology in 2006 about the concerns relating to late stent thrombosis with drug eluding stents. Uh, that was followed uh, in December by uh, FDA panel hearings and a closed meeting to discuss the, uh, uh, the importance of these findings from registries that were uh, reported in Europe. Uh, and then in March, early March of uh, 2007, there were five uh, articles in the New England Journal of Medicine devoted to reports of both the randomized trials of uh, taxis and uh, cipher stents versus bare metal stents and the registry data obtained both from the United States and Europe. Uh, again, uh, calling attention to some of the concerns or safety issues relating to late stent thrombosis. And then lastly, the COURAGE trial was published and presented about three weeks later, also in the New England Journal of Medicine. So there were, there were four, uh, uh, you know, four developments that occurred within a roughly five to seven month period that I think uh, refocused much attention uh, on the whole issue of uh, the, uh, the efficacy, of course, and the safety uh, of drug eluding stents. 
Well, I, th I think the problem with uh, DTCA for, for angioplasty uh, advocating a particular device is, is that uh, you know, it, this is you know, very sophisticated medical information that I think is well beyond the ability of the average lay consumer to uh, acquire such uh, information to make informed decisions on the basis of a 30 to 60 second television ad. You know, quite in contrast to pharmacologic uh, agents that are pitched routinely on television, you know, which merely require a provider or physician-patient interaction and a prescription uh, f to go to the drugstore to get a, a, a prescription for a given drug. Uh, it, it's much more complex to think that a patient would actually, during the context of a procedure, challenge the interventional cardiologist's uh, judgment about saying that I want a particular type of stent implanted uh, versus another kind of stent uh, uh, implantation. And then perhaps the larger issue is, is the potential for deception and advertising here because uh, in the 60-second in the Life Wide Open ad, um, uh, there is virtually no mention of any of the adverse uh, um, uh, effects or potential um, uh, complications, if you will, of uh, stent uh, stenting or stent, stent implantation with or without a cipher stent, I might add. And that's quite in contrast to the full disclosure that one sees in print ads. And, and again, the FDA statutory requirements uh, uh, mandate that in print ads, uh, there must be a full disclosure of all uh, of all reported side effects or adverse outcomes. Whereas in a broadcast ad, uh, the statute is much less restrictive uh, and in essence uh, results only in the manufacturer uh, briefly mentioning selected uh, safety data. Uh, but they must in turn direct the viewer uh, or the reader to a website or to some other source of information for complete product information that would, uh, uh, you know, uh, that would uh, provide a full disclosure of all uh, adverse events. And as you look at this 60-second uh, television ad, uh, it directs you to a website, but the website doesn't really provide any adequate uh, safety information. So, you know, this raises the issue of, of whether the Life Wide Open uh, Cypher Stent ad uh, really is in keeping uh, with the spirit and the letter of the law as promulgated by the FDA, uh, and whether this really represents uh, a a fair and balanced advertisement uh, to healthcare consumers who really have a right and expectation uh, to really know the full uh, a spectrum of risks and benefits, pros and cons of a given device. Uh, and so uh, I, I'm not uh, stating explicitly that I think that the ad is deceptive, but I think one uh, might view the ad in the context in which it airs as providing only very limited information without any uh, direction to the viewer for more complete safety information. Well, the bottom line is that I think the FDA needs to uh, re-examine its policy toward direct-to-consumer advertising uh, in, in that uh, there needs to be uh, some balance with respect to promoting the benefits of a drug or a device uh, and counterbalance that, if you will, with a full disclosure of the risks and the adverse uh, uh, effects or complications that may occur as a consequence of treatment with a drug or a device. And again, uh, there, there, is a, uh, there is an imbalance, if you will, in the, uh, the degree and extent of clarity of information provided in print, broad, in, in print versus broadcast advertising. And, and again, I've never been a full, or I've never been really a, uh, a strong proponent of direct to consumer advertising simply because I think it doesn't uh, provide healthcare consumers with the full disclosure uh, that consumers need to be able to make and base sound clinical decisions about what's best for them.